Welcome back to IGN Live at E3 2019. We are just moments away from the Ubisoft press conference, but right now, let's turn our attention to the Outer Worlds. The game turned heads when it was revealed at the Game Awards, and we got a much closer look at it during Microsoft's press conference. To talk about it, please welcome Danny Lee from IGN Israel, and of Fallout and Diablo 3 fame, Leonard Bayarski from Obsidian Games. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, right out the gate, I want, to, I want to address this. People are drawing a lot of comparisons between the Outer Worlds and Fallout New Vegas. Yeah. which is a game that a lot of people really like. <laughs> Can you compare these two? Um, well, in a lot of ways, it's kind of a spiritual successor, I guess. Uh, it's the same style of game. Um, it very much has a lot of the same tone and feel to it, but that's only natural because Tim, Kane, and I were part of the group that created the original Fallout, um, and it very much has our sensibilities to it. So um, any game we make, regardless of what genre it is or what... Uh, setting, it kind of seems to have a little bit of that feel anyways. Okay, so this time, you guys, you're taking us into space. Why this specific setup? Um, ironically enough, we never made a science fiction game together. We made post-apocalyptic, which is technically science fiction, I guess, but it's a specific type of science fiction. Um, and then we did a which is a kind of steampunky magic versus tech thing. Um, I've never, even though I love science fiction, it's one of my favorite genres, we've never made a straight science fiction game. We just thought... Um, be really fun to explore that with that type of game. And this also seems to have a fair amount of the kind of sense of humor, the very like dark sense mm -hmm. of humor yeah. we come to expect <laughs> from uh, Fallout. This is uh, Halcyon. This is a colony ruled by corporations. Yes. What could go wrong? Corporations in space. Exactly. It's it's a utopia. Can you tell us a little bit about sort of the, um, I guess the the situation here? What is the, what is the player's role in all this? Yeah, well you were on a colony ship that got lost on the way to the colony, so you show up about 70 years late. Um, in the meantime, this colony has kind of started falling on hard times. Um, you get um, unfrozen by a mad scientist who recruits you to help him uh, freeze, I mean, unfreeze the other colonists. There's still hundreds of thousands of colonists on the ship uh, that you came on, um, but he needs more chemicals to help, you know, from you to help revive those other colonists. And uh, you don't have to play as his ally. You can turn against him. Um, as we do in you know, most of our games, so that you can play uh, it any way you want to play it, uh, which is very important to us, being able to choose your character and play your character any way you want. So in the, tr in the trailer we saw during Microsoft, it said you can be a villain, you can be a hero, you can be a lunatic. Can you also be an idiot? <laughs> yes, you can. Um, if you take below average intelligence, you get the option of picking uh, dumb dialogue, which is also very humorous. So I'm so this bring, bringing me to the, to the flaw system. I really, like, what's going on there? Is that effect only on the character or the, the narrative as well? Um, it's mostly on the character. Uh, what you can do is if you've, uh, the game watches what's going on, and if you've been, like, for instance, uh, died or taken a lot of damage from robots, you get offered a robophobia flaw. Um, this is a way of making it so that um, it's kind of like a trade-off. You can get an extra perk if you take a flaw, um, but you are, you know, causing yourself to be debuffed for the rest of the game. Um, Tim really liked this idea. He really wanted to um, pursue the idea of a flawed hero. Um, you know, most games you end up like superhuman at the end of it, so this is kind of our way of tempering that. Um, but we're leaving it up to the player. You know, if you want to play the end game like that or have the game progressively get more difficult, it's a great way to do it. There is some role-playing opportunities there as well. Now, I want to talk about sort of the structure of the, of the world. Is this like a full-blown sort of open-world scenario where you can just go in any direction, or is there...? Um, no, it's, it's, uh, we call it open worlds, I guess. Uh, there's, there's distinct uh, chunks or areas you can play in, um, but the whole conceit of the game is that you're, you know, a space smuggler, space <coughs> hero, so you get your own ship, you can fly from area to area. So having one big open area um, isn't as conducive to that kind of fantasy. How many worlds out there? Um, well, there's several different places you can go. In terms of actual full worlds, there's two that were um, terraformed. There's some asteroids and space stations and other places you can go in the colony. Um, one of the worlds uh, terraformed supposedly correctly, and that's Terra 2. That's where all the corporations are. And then there's Monarch, which is what we're showing at E3. And that was uh, terraformed incorrectly, and the, the monsters, instead of dying off, became much more bigger and angrier. And uh, it's been disavowed by the corporate board. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really, that's our biggest actual open area in one contiguous map. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity there, obviously, with lawlessness and game playing there. Can you tell us a little bit about how the combat works? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's straight, it feels a lot like a, a shooter, first-person shooter. 
Um, but we also have uh, t tactical time dilation, which is a side effect of you being in hibernation for so long um, and possibly the way the scientists revived you. Um, and this slows down the combat. It lets, it, lets you uh, play things more strategically. Um, you can also see weak spots on, on uh, your enemies. Um, if you perk it up, you can also like extend the length of it. It's of uh, the slowing down of time. You can move faster while everybody else is slower. So it's it's just another way of playing it. It's it's a it's a way for players who don't want to play it as such a fast-paced action game. But it's also very interesting. You can do um, perk up, getting a location shot. So you know if you shoot somebody in the leg, they can they limp and they're less effective in combat, or you can blind them by shooting them in the face. Now I'm curious about sort of the the overall the size of the different worlds. Um, would you say this, how, how much time will players be spending traversing this versus sort of like almost digging into the, kind of getting into the depth of it? Is it, it, it seems almost like you're more focusing on like sort of the society rather than the, the scale, I guess. Uh, yeah, in a lot of ways. Um, and once again, because we let you play how you want to play, it's, it, you can play very surface and just kind of cruise through and just get the very basics of the story and the world. Um, we really like to build a world that has a lot of depth to it. Um, I feel like that's the most fun of these kind of the most fun part of these kind of games is really digging into it and finding out what's going on, um, hearing different NPCs talk about the world differently, so you get a different take from the different NPCs you talk to, and kind of deciding for yourself what's actually happening here. Um, and it's just you know it's always fun to find a new. Uh, universe to explore a new IP where you haven't heard anything about it and to start hearing all these these hopefully interesting things about how it came to be the way it is and what you can do to change that. So I know it's too soon to talk about it but are we gonna see any expansion in the near future because I have an idea if you can add another world or anything. Um, right now we're just focused on getting this one done as, as, as good as possible um, but you know we're not opposed to anything like that in the future. I mean, it is, it's a very modular system to have the ability to add entire worlds. Exactly. I like that. Good, good thinking. Um, now, are we've, we've obviously got space travel here. Is there any, any sort of vehicles, or are you going to be on foot the whole time? Uh, no, you're on foot the whole time, and you take your, your ship from, from place to place. Um, it's kind of like just your mobile player housing. Whoa, no. Okay. T tell us more about the companions. Um, They're my private does, like, friend. If, let's say I'm choosing like, two companions. Does it affect my narrative as well? Uh, the companions each have their own quests, and they um, they contribute to the story. Uh, uh, from a gameplay standpoint, they contribute to your skills. So if I'm if I'm lacking uh, lock picking skills or dialogue skills, I pick certain companions to go with me, and they add to my skills. Um, they also will interact or interject when you're having conversations with other NPCs with what their opinion is. Um, sometimes they can get belligerent with the other NPCs, and you can have to talk them down. Um, especially, you know, if you choose to go against the scientist and go with the board, which is the corporate board, um, one of your companions really doesn't like that. Um, so you might have to buff up your leadership to be able to calm him down and keep him in your party. That's something I'm, I'm very excited to hear. I like, I like the amount of sort of uh, wiggle room you guys tend to allow to really like to to let to let players make mistakes and also uh provide opportunities for sort of bad things to happen i think that leads to some really good storytelling uh the flaw system is a great example of that could you sort of i don't know allude to some other elements like that that really just throw monkey wrenches at you um it's really <laughs> it's all under the player's control mostly you know you can pick things um you can play through the game and kill everybody before they give you the quest. There's one person we don't let you kill until the end um, because we narratively needed somebody that you could go to. Everybody, find a scrap of paper, a log on a computer that points you to your next place that you have to go to to continue in the game. Dear Lord, that's uh, a... <laughs> do everything you want. That's, I, I mean, like that's, this game. Yeah, that's the mark of a good RPG, is really allow them to, like, proper role-playing. That's, that's always been our goal, is to let the player uh, choose the character they want and play the character any way they want and have the game react to how you're playing your character. And is there, uh, there's robust character creation, I imagine? Yes, we're not really getting into deep into character creation yet, but yeah, everything you would expect from uh, RPG character creation will be there. Everything we are. I saw you showed uh, in a, this kind of a showcase that you had in PAX. Uh, you can take, uh, you can put everything you want, you can dress everything the way you like. And you had this, the moon that you saw. I saw yes. you can wear it as a helmet. Yes. And you can run around. So there's a lot of elements like that, crazy things that I can wear and go and get goofy around. 
Uh, yeah, that's probably the goofiest or the craziest, but uh, yeah, we've tried to include a couple things like that. Um, but yeah, you can wear any armor you pick up. You can equip your companions with any armor you pick up. Now, uh, the corporations here obviously play a big part, uh, and uh, it's kind of a little bit too close to home, I feel like, with real life. Uh, are any of these corporations, like, benevolent, or are they all sort of just, like, you know, evil corporations? Um, they think they're benevolent. They, I mean, they think that they're doing what's best for the colony, and they are um, trying to create a perfect system. Uh, the fact that it kind of has no regard for human beings or, or how they're not just cogs in the machine. Um, is kind of lost on them, so they feel like this is this is them creating a perfect society. Oh boy! Well, the road to hell is is paved with good intentions. Yes. Well, there is on Monarch. There is a, there is someone trying to um, get their get their corporation back on the board. Um, so I guess you could cast them as maybe not an evil corporation. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for showing it off, and Danny, thank you for helping me doing the interview. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for having us. That is Outer Worlds. Uh, it, always a pleasure. Uh, I. I can't wait to be stupid in space. IGN will have tons more coverage of the Outer Worlds all year, so stick around.